Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am doing another episode of Crappy Pastas. Now today we're only doing one. And the only reason why we're only doing one is because this may be the worst creepypasta I have found to date. Yes, we're gonna have all the jokes, we're gonna make fun of this thing till there is no tomorrow, and we will realize why sequels don't work. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ben, a friendly spirit. With that being said, we're moving on. Hello, you may know me as Ben. Don't worry though, I'm a friendly spirit now. You may wonder about me, you know, how he drowned, what his life was like, etc, etc, etc. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna answer everything and start back when I was 10. Moving to Portland. It was the year 2000. Our family had moved from Phoenix, Arizona to Portland, Oregon. We were always on the run from something. But, my parents ceased to tell me what we were running from. Okay. Eventually, our f new we got our new home right by the lake, and I took my bag and set up my new favorite system, the N64, in my room. I just wanted to get away from everything and play my favorite game, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I played through that game so many times and enjoyed it each and every time. That night, I sat there, wondering if there was anything for me here in Portland. What the fuck am I reading? <sighs> the next morning was my first day at a new school. I found my locker and started to settle in. But right then, I turned around and a kid in a button-down shirt grabbed me by the neck and lifted me up. So look here, everyone! It's the new kid! <laughs> Let's see if he's got any balls. What the fuck, am I reading a 90s movie? He then threw a punch as I hit the deck and then smashed his head on a locker. Wait, what the, okay. You know what, we're stopping the story right here. We gotta deconstruct this. We're getting Mr. 90s Bully, who is holding our main hero, I guess, Ben, by the neck and is lifting him up. He then proceeds to try to throw a punch at him while still holding him up by the neck, yet apparently Ben was able to ghost his way out of his hand and then somehow smash his head on a locker. I... I fuck it, I don't even care. I don't even... I don't even know anymore. <sighs> I then hit the deck and then smash his head in a locker. Okay, maybe I overdid it. But that's kind of my life as you'll find out. Beat him down, Alex! Oh my fucking god, is this 90s of what? What? Who says beat him down? Who? One of his friends shouted, Yes, this is the kid you know as... Wait for it. Beat him down, Alex! One of his friends shouted. Yes, this is the kid you now know as J. Do Decibel. Oh my god! Right then, the bell rang and we went our separate ways. I got home and I was about to play some Majora's Mask when my mother was sitting at a table with a strange old man. Hello, young boy, he cheerfully said. What is your name? B b b b ben I replied. Oh, that's our Benjamin. He's quite shy, but he's very friendly, Mr. Helmsworth. My father interrupted. In the case if you are wondering, Mr. Helmsworth did sell Alex the cursed cartridge 20 years later. Now, allow me to explain to you why this is complete bullshit. As you know, the story of Ben Drown takes place at about 2009-2010. This story takes place in the year 2000. 20 years would be 2020. You know what doesn't take place in 2020? Ben Drowned, because that happened in like 2009. 
Which means that technically this story claims that Ben drowned doesn't take place till the future. Where Call of Duty has a bunch of magical flying people and has got rid of all the black people out of Detroit, apparently. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I'll try not to interrupt anymore. Say, Ben. Tonight your mother and I are gonna go out for dinner, so you're gonna be staying with Mr. Helmsworth. Oh boy. The Faithful Knight. For about a minute, Mr. Helmsworth and I sat there speechless. So, Benny, you want to... What do you want to talk about? He said. Hmm. I'm not liking my new school. I replied. Why not? I'd rather not say. Okay. Fine. What do you like to do? Play Majora's Mask. Is that a video game? Yeah. It's all, it'll always be with me no matter how old I get. More awkward silence, and I'm not fucking with you. That is right there in the story. Benny, I'm very old, and I want you to do something for me. Oh, what the fuck? What? A puppet show. Okay. You're probably sitting there with a dropped jaw to the ground, but I seriously thought nothing of it at the time. But looking back on it, I should definitely called Mr. Han Mr. Chris Hansen on Dr. Child Porn over here. He watched creepily as... How do you watch something creepily? I don't even fucking... How do you watch something creepily? He looked creepy as I performed, or... He had a creepy crooked smile as I... But you can't watch something in a creepy way. Like, what is he doing? Contorting his back into, like, like the way they did in the ring? What the hell is he doing? He watched creepily as I performed a puppet show from the sound of music, as that was the only one I could think of. It was so weird. He just sat there smiling, rubbing his hands together. When it was over, I blurted, Uh, sir, Mr. Dr. Childborn, um... My parents wore to be a stranger danger, and I... He cut me off, saying, Whoa, Ben, I made you do the puppet show as a metaphor. As if you... As if to say, you're my puppet. You really wanted to talk about your bully. What? Oh, God. I sighed and said, All right. His name was Alex. He pushes me around and makes fun of my faggoty haircut. And now I, now Ben looks like Justin Bieber. <sighs> he looked angry and said, Why blast him? I know. I want to get him back, but I, I just... I just don't know how. <gasps> Come closer, Ben. Okay. What kind of things does he like? Well, he loves his hermit crab, Han, and... He loves his hermit crab, Han, and his hamster, Chewy. Oh, yeah, I guess he likes Star Wars too. Oh, it's Han, ha ha ha. He whispered in my ear. No, Mr. Helmsworth, no, I will not do it. Okay, what? No, Mr. Helmsworth, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> The next day, FAG! Alex yelled as he pushed me into my locker. I giggled as I thought of what I would do tonight. I snuck into his house while he was out for dinner. Mr. Helmsworth gave me two knives and three cans of spray paint. I sprayed, Alex is an asshole and eats turds for breakfast, what a dweeb! I manically laughed as I went over to his pets and then I cut him up. His room was a mess, his pets. Habitats had their blood spilling out onto the floor. I flipped them. Okay, Ben, you officially deserved anything that's going to happen to you from this point on, because clearly you do not have respect for people's property and or the sake of a value of a life. Okay. 
I ran outside and thought, damn, how am I going to get back? I looked to my right and I heard a whistle. It was Mr. Helmsworth in a 1947 Ford convertible. A bin chap, I said. i uh, sorry, he said. And then he, I, he, then I said, thanks, dude. It was nearly nine o'clock. And after about five minutes, he said, you shouldn't have done that. Huh? But you told me to, I replied. You should have done that. But I'm glad you did that. He whispered creepily. C can we stop? That is not a phrase people use. The next day, Alex came in crying. Wh What's wrong, Alex? I said smugly. Shut up! You know what you did! You're screwed! You're screwed here! You hear me? You're screwed! I'm not even fucking you, that's what it says. He yelled. He then ran to the office as he dropped a journal, which I immediately took. Alexander to the principal's office. Immediately! I'm not even fucking with you, that's what it says. I went... Through the rest of the day, wondering what Alex might do to me. He'll probably beat me up, but since I killed something important to him, he might kill me. And then, he'll kill my family. Oh my god! Oh no, I was... Oh no, I was freaked out. I had to read his journal. Maybe he mentioned it there. October 6, 2000. My parents. My parents, they... I don't know where they've gone. I need to take it out on someone. A new target. October 7th, 2000. A new kid, Ben, came to school. He's the kind of kid who could help me get through this. But no. He's the perfect target, because I'm a 90s bully, and I don't have respect for authority, which means that I need to beat up anyone who's new. October 8th, 2000. I came home and saw Han and Chewie been killed. I want whoever did it. I saw that mask salesman, Mr. Helmsworth, chuckle as I got on the bus. He has something to do with it. That twerp Ben has been hanging around with him. He's such a pe pedo. That old geyser, I will kill him! Ben must die! Okie dokie dokie, Mr. Crazy Kid. It was just a hamster, you can buy another one for $12 at the pet store. My mother and father stood in the family room pale. Ben, they found us! What? D just an exclamation point that you can't- Ben, they found us, my father whispered with an exclamation point. You can't whisper and throw... Huh? I asked. They, Ben! They! My mother yelled. Who is they? Because we gotta stop playing the pronoun game. The ancient ones, Ben. They disguise themselves. My father explained, but I still don't get it. Then a bunch of hooded figures dragged them out of my house. They ran, and one of their hoods fell. It was Mr. Helmsworth, but with squinty eyes and parted hair and a sickly happy smile. This part of the story is labeled, I ran, but I couldn't hide. I ran to the dock by the lake, and I started crying, but then I saw Alex with his fists clench. It's time to pay! He said in his typical 90s, terrible bully accent. I stood there as he grabbed me and held a knife to my neck. He tried to throw me off the dock, which is about 15 foot drop. But I tripped and I almost fell off. He kicked me back. He kicked me in the back and I started plummeting. Before I crashed into the water, I heard a high-pitched voice say, Come play with us, Ben. hee <laughs> I was in the water. I was drained of all energy, and I couldn't swim up the shore. There's nothing left for me anyway, so I drowned. Mr. Helmsworth took my copy of Majora's Mask, hacked it, because he used to be a technician. And well, you know what happens next. So now I sit here at the bottom of the lake, thinking, 
Won't you join me? Fuck no, Ben. Oh, God. This story. This story. Okay, guys. What What is bad about this story? Well, I think it would be easier to list what this story did right. Which is nothing. Um... I'm, I'm trying to think of anything good to say. Um... Okay, this story has incoherent writing. This story cannot spell things correctly. This thing has bad grammar. It has bad pronouns. The fact that their parents played the pronoun game, which, as you know, has been coined by CinemaSins as the moment when you cannot figure out what someone's talking about because they refuse to use actual names. Ah. Uh. And now this story is so terrible that they literally inputted every 90s stereo, sorry, 90s movie trope that you can get out of any movie ever. This story seems to think that it's being clever by making it seem like bullies only bully because they have bad home lives. Which it may be true for some cases, but there is no one who fucking sits there in their house like, Hey, there's a new kid today. My parents are at a bad run. Why don't I beat the living hell out of them? Because I got no way of working out my anger. Ben is made dislikable, unlikable, and weird by the fact that they got a freaking pedophile and he listens to him. Dr. Childborn, what's happened to you? Okay, what else? I'm looking through the story. I could just pick and choose anything. Puppet show, Dr. Childborn. Um, oh, why don't we get my favorite line of all? No, Mr. Helmsworth. I'm sorry. I can't even. No, I can't do. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, why would the dude put that there? Why? There are exclamation points insinuating I should be yelling that line. But then it it devolves out to ellipses. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> oh god. Um this thing is terrible. Uh Mr. Helmsworth is a bad person. Miss, the parents seem to be running from something, but don't tell their son. Why would they input that? Why can't this be a normal story? Even the name, Ben, a friendly spirit, is the worst thing ever. Oh my god, is this like a troll pasta? What happened? What happened? If you watch my live stream, you heard me read some of this, alright? But, yeah, whoever wrote this... Don't ha let me discourage you, because this is the most hilarious story unintentionally I've ever read. This is what Crappy Pastas is about. It's not about reading troll pastas, it's about reading stories that are terrible, despite the fact that the author put effort. And for that, I thank the author. Thank you for putting effort into this, because you put a little bit of effort, you gave me, like, the best afternoon ever. <sighs> This has been your host, That Creepy Reading, and expect a creepy pasta either f maybe today, maybe tomorrow. It should be sometime on the weekend. If you enjoyed this, let me know, but till then, have a good one.